And for our next speaker, the Dean of Flint, Michigan, Dr. Fred Milo. Pleased to be here and to be a part of this teaching and this body, you just can't find words to express that. This is bigger than you and me. Now, You kind of sit back and wonder, you know, there, there's a chance that you might get called on. And when it happens, you see, you remember back here when the children of Israel gathered back here, there was a quaking going on. <laughs> so right now I'm witnessing that quaking. Nevertheless, you see, it is a pleasure for me to have an opportunity to stand before you and testify <laughs> to some of the things which I have learned since coming into this school. Now, just like the previous speaker was saying, now, there, I, I went to a, a junior college where they were teaching about the four Gospels. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in the Church of God in Christ, see? So many of you are familiar with that organization. So you can imagine what it was like for me to grow up. You see, I was tearing on the altar, waiting on the Holy Spirit to come in, you see? Mm -hmm. And at the time that, uh, prior to me being baptized, see, I, uh, tear it on the altar for a whole week. Nothing happened. And everybody around me was falling out and, you understand, perspiring and repeating the name of Jesus mm -hmm. 90 miles a minute. Yeah. And here I am, censored in my heart. I don't want to be lost, you see. So here I am just trying with all I can, you understand, to open myself up to this. And the last night of the revival, see, I fell into the same thing that the others around me did. And I come to realize later on that everybody else had the same thing I had, which was a delusion. <laughs> So, when I learned something about the four Gospels, see, I thought I was on the road to some knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to this school, I found out, you see, it was just so plain and simple. It was just too simple. It was just, it was so simple, it was confounding. You, you see? Come to find out that there's just one Gospel. That's right. Just there's just one Messiah, so it just can't be but one gospel. That's pretty plain and simple. Now, now what we come down here to do is to preach the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. So we don't come down here to uh, lift up ourselves, you understand, to try to make a name, you see or get respect, see? When we open ourselves up to those kinds of things, we're asking for trouble, see? So what we have to do is be obedient what the, to what the, the founder said, you understand? In other words, keep it simple, preach the gospel, and let the chips fall. And when you do that, you see, if they like you, that's good. If they don't, 
That's good. <laughs> See? That's right. Because you have spoken the truth. Now, let's get uh, Luke 24th chapter, uh, 27th verse. Yeah. Uh, also, Habakkuk, uh, the second chapter, and the second verse. I'm um, two and one, Habakkuk two and one. Uh, read Luke, please. Luke 24, 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, Yahshua the Messiah, see? Now, when I was uh, uh, being taught in the world about uh, uh, religion and about Christ, you understand? You see? They were telling me that I had to start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and you understand, going through the four Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels and all the others, see? They even have names for them. Uh, you understand the way they describe the Gospels because of the parallel. In other words, they don't realize that it's all about one story. They're just named for one story in the Bible. See, that's the reality of it. Now, we read all about these other various episodes, but they're all talking about the one Savior here. See? Now, if you're going to uh, get an opinion from somebody, or you want to know something about somebody, you wouldn't ask their friend. Some of us do that, and we get misled. See? But what you should do is go directly to the source. Mm -hmm. So now, the Messiah began with Moses. So now, if you're going to follow after his footsteps, which is impossible, see? <laughs> really? Then why don't you begin with Moses? See? And not Matthew and so on. See? Now, Yahshua the Messiah began with Moses. Read that, please. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So now if we want to find out something about Yahshua the Messiah, then we have to go to the scriptures. Okay, drop down to the uh, 40, uh, 40, 44th, I believe. 44th, 47th? Yes. Okay. And he said unto them, uh -huh. These are the words which I spoke unto you. Now he's told them, said, This is what I told you, you see, while I was yet with you, or before I took off the flesh. See, this is what I was telling you. Read. These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must that, be... That some things must be fulfilled. You must do something for yourself. No. That all things must be fulfilled. Yeah. See? He didn't leave anybody or send a chief representative to complete <laughs> anything. That's right. See? He fulfilled it all himself. Okay? Uh, that's sufficient. Now go over to Habakkuk, please. Habakkuk 2 and 1. Mm -hmm. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Okay? Now, in order for us to understand something about Yahshua the Messiah, we have to go back into the law and to the prophets. Now when we go back there, we're going to pick up precepts and principles that are going to lead up, up to a profound knowledge and understanding about Yahshua the Messiah. Now we don't want to have just some knowledge or a shallow knowledge, but we want to have a profound mm -hmm. or a deep knowledge and understanding because salvation is predicated upon what you do. No. no. It's predicated upon knowing something. It's predicated upon knowledge. Now, you've heard this before, and if you continue to come in class and sit down and listen, you're going to hear it again. See? Sometimes it's hard to get up and say the same thing over and over again. You see? Sometimes it gets to be a hard job. You see? But nevertheless, we sit down, put our feet under the table, and we eat the same thing day in and day out. You see? Is that right? right? See, so now we look at that natural thing, then we can understand the spiritual reality of it. Is that right? Okay. Now, Habakkuk said he will stand up on his watch and set up upon a tower. In other words, he has to be in an elevated state or understanding to receive knowledge from Yahweh. See? 
And you go back and you see Moses, you understand? See? When he receiving the vision of the creation of the heavens and the earth, he's in an elevated state. See? He's a, a top of the mount here. See? And this is synonymous to your most holy place. So in other words, when you have come to a knowledge and understanding, it will take place in your elevated state also. See? Read, please. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and uh -huh. what I shall answer when I am reproved. Now, see, he, he's talking about having some patience. See? A lot of us will come in and say, well, you see, I've heard this over and over again. So, uh, well, you know, I don't need to hear this anymore. I, they're saying the same thing. See? Well, you're just going to have to sit there and wait. See? Read on. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain up on table. So the vision, so what you see here before you is nothing more or less than the vision, you see, made plain or drawn out on tables. See, read. That he may run that readeth it. That he may run that readeth it. And one version says that you may read it fluently. Mm -hmm. Which is all about the same thing, you see. In other words, once you come into a knowledge and understanding of it, see, you're going to run to mama. You're going to run to dad and sisters and brothers and friends and whatnot. And you're going to tell the vision. See? Read on. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Now, this is the part that seemed like it might be for a... Uh, 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 might be a little contradictive here, you see, in some people's understanding. See? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. See? In other words, we have to... In other words, when Moses goes up in this mountain back here, you see, when he goes up there, he doesn't understand everything or remember everything that he saw up there. It had to be shown to him again. See, during the time he's up here for those 33 final days in the mountain, you understand, he's seeing, uh, you know, the same thing over and over again. See, and when we come in here, we got to take that same trip back up in the mountain with Moses. See, we got to do it over and over again. So eventually, something will sink in. See, read on. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but uh -huh. at the end, it's... But the vision is for an appointed time, see? Now, like the previous speaker was saying, you come in and you sit down and you miss it this time. You come back again. You see, that might be your appointed time, see? But the vision is speaking at the end, see? It's not me, it's not you or anybody else that's doing the speaking. It is the vision that speaks because, see, we can inadvertently get up here and say something. You understand? You're thinking one thing and your lips are, you know, you're saying something else come out your mouth all the time. You see, mm -hmm. I've done that many of times. I've said something and somebody will say, that's not right. You see, but I was thinking one thing and said something else. See, so you can inadvertently do that, mm -hmm. you see, but the vision doesn't error. See, that's so that's the thing that we have to look at is the vision. The vision will speak and the vision will not lie. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so now. Let's go and look at uh, uh, this tabernacle pattern here. See, first of all, we said that the pattern has the most holy place, holy place, and a court run about. Now, this is a tabernacle pattern, which is a figure of the Godhead, which is Father, Word, Holy Spirit, these three are one. Now, when we look at the Godhead, and we look at the tabernacle pattern, see, this is a pattern of heavenly things. In other words, the pattern, there, you listen closely to the moderation, you see, you, you hear that there is nothing that escapes the pattern. See? So it just don't matter what it is. You put it on the pattern, it's like putting data into a computer. See? If it does not jive with the program, then it don't compute. Is that right? See? Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't fit the pattern, it just don't compute. Right. See, then you know then not to buy that. See? So now what we want to do is look at the pattern, you see. Now in your pattern, you get the precepts of blood, water, spirit, 40. See? Or death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. 
See? It sounds like you just heard that a few minutes ago. Is that right? See? And you're going to hear it again. See? And, and, and uh, after I'm down, then somebody else will get up and go through it again. You see? And hopefully, each time that you make this trek, you're going to be edified. See? Now, I want to just touch off on uh, 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 one of the, uh, a couple of things, you see. In other words, as the first speaker was saying, you see, we can't get up here in the cloud to explain something to you. You have to be raised up, see. Now, we can go back to Moses, as Messiah said, you see. In other words, beginning with Moses, we can see some of these precepts. Now, let's get, go back to uh, Exodus, the third chapter, and pick up where Moses is out here at the burning bush. Exodus 3 and 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Uh -huh. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. Right. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Uh -huh. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Okay. And now, Moses, read on. And Moses said... I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Now Moses is turning aside to see the great sight. See, now when we come in here and sit down, you see, we come in and bring all kinds of things with us, all kinds of baggage. See, the problems of the job, of the, your, your friends or relations or what have you. You see, and all these things are with you when you come in here. See, but when you come in and sit down, you have to turn aside. You see? And see this great sight. See? Read. Why the bush is not burnt. Uh-huh. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Okay. Now, I want to go down to the part where he's uh, uh, asking what's that in his hand, the rod, and he casts it down. Okay, that's Exodus 4 and 1. Okay. And Moses answered and, sa and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. Uh -huh. For they will say, Yahweh hath not appeared unto thee. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said unto him, What is that in thine hand? Now, he says, Moses, what is that in thy hand? See, read. And he said, a rod. A rod. See, now, the point that I want to make here, see, is that there is nothing that escapes a pattern. Yahweh has been working by a pattern from day one. See? And we can go back past day one into eternity, you understand? <laughs> see? Now, so now, what I want to show you here is how Yahweh, you see, in other words, see, this is something that, that we've been reading over and over again, and one day, you see, Yahweh just showed this to me, you understand? See, and perhaps some of you have seen this already, I don't know, you see? But it was the Holy Spirit that caused me to understand it, see? How that Yahweh is raising up Moses by this same pattern. See? Right. Okay, read on. And he said, cast it on the ground. Now, Moses cast the rod on the ground. See? Now, Moses got to reach down to pick up the rod. See? And he, off the ground, see? That is the earth plane or the court run about. Is that right? Okay, read on. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. Read. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. Right. So now Moses put forth his hand and picks up the serpent from the ground. See? Or the earth plane. Or the cord round about. Read on. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Read on. That they may believe that Yahweh Elohim of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, 
and the Elohim of Jacob. Now see, everything that we're reading about is in a threefold manner. The Abraham, uh, in other words, the, the, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See? Read. Hath appeared unto thee. Uh-huh. See, in other words, Yahweh is going to give Moses three signs when he goes back down here in the land of Egypt, you see, whereby he might deliver the children of Israel. See, by the pattern. Read on. And Yahweh said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. Put thy hand into thy bosom. That is, see, in other words, when we look at the tabernacle of man, we see that the chest cavity or chest region is the holy place. So he picks up the rod from the earth of the ground, that's the core round about. So now Moses is being raised up to another plane. So he puts his hand into his bosom, which is the holy place. Read on. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Uh-huh. So now when he puts his hand into his bosom, it's like leprosy. Now, you know, leprosy was like AIDS. Uh -huh. See, once you got it, you, got it. you see, you that's it. In other words, that's a, a manifestation of death, mm -hmm. see? So we see Moses buries this hand back, you understand, and he resurrects it again. He, he pulls it out again yeah. as, as a resurrection, so now we get a manifestation of life, see? Mm -hmm. See? So now we get a death manifested in the holy place. See, in other words, we come into IDMR, that's like coming into the holy place or standing in the gospel. See, when you come in here and begin to learn about the truth and reality of your heavenly Father, you understand, then you begin to die. And a new creature is raised up in your stead. Is that right? All right, read on. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. Uh -huh. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. See, now, hold it, just a second, see. Now, these things that Moses are doing, these signs are speaking, see. If they do not believe the voice of the first sign, then they will believe the voice of the mm -hmm. second sign, mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. So, in other words... When we come down here and begin to demonstrate the operation of Yahweh's purpose by this vision, you understand, then we're no longer, we're not doing any speaking. See, it is the vision that is speaking. That's See, right. By the pattern. That's See, right. Read on. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, uh -huh. that thou shalt take of the water of the river. Thou shalt take of the water of the river. And pour it upon the dry land. And pour it up now. See? Now, now, now watch this very closely, <laughs> see? Now we have Yahweh as manifested by this cloud, you see, without shape and form. See? Then we have Yahweh Elohim, which is Yahweh taking on the superincorporeal shape and form or likeness of a man with thy flesh and blood. Then we have Yahweh further condescending into the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah. See? One, two, three manifestations but one spirit see now when Moses is to go down there you see first of all he's given the first sign you see he picks up the serpent from the earth plane see the second sign he's put his hand into his bosom of the holy place see now the third sign he's given you see a charge to do down there when he goes down there so in other words we don't get a physical manifestation here See, this is incomprehensible in principle showing forth the threefold makeup of Yahweh. Is everybody able to understand that? See? So now, we don't get a physical demonstration out here at the burning bush of the third sign. See? Which manifests Yahweh in pure spirit state without shape and form. See? Now, as we begin to go on through these things, you understand, you see that everything Yahweh is doing is going by a pattern. Yeah. See? The same pattern. It's just only one. See? Now, when we go back and begin to look at various uh, uh, characters back there in the Bible, you see, 
then we can pick out any one of them. It doesn't matter. You see, they're all going by the same pattern. See, because in other words, it is Yahweh that is operating down through the ages and dispensation. See? Now, let's look back here at Yahshua Messiah, for example, see? Now, Yahshua Messiah is the Savior. Is that right? See, he was born, uh, uh, Galatians, the fourth chapter. He was born under the law. Mm -hmm. Galatians 4 and 4. Mm -hmm. But when the fullness of the time was come, uh -huh. Yahweh sent forth his son. Yahweh sent forth his son. Made of a woman. Made of a woman. Made under the law. Made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law. To redeem them that were under the law. Now, who was under the law? Israel. The Jews. Mm -hmm. There was no Christians back there. I'm sorry. <laughs> See? It was not given unto the Christian world. Christendom never had anything to do with this, you see. For some reason or another, well, we know why that is, you see, that they have taken these things upon themselves, and they glory in it, you see. But what they glory in is death, you see. There was no life in it in the first place because it was the law of sin and death, mm -hmm. see. So everything about it was showing forth death, you see. Now, so we have Yahshua the Messiah, see, being born of a, made of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those that were under the law. Is that right? Mm -hmm. See? So in other words, to be a redeemer meant that he was going to do something. He was going to save Israel. Is that right? Okay. See? Now, I uh, don't have, uh, I don't think I have the time to go through all the scriptures, so what I'm going to do is take you back to uh, uh, Judges uh, uh, pick up Samson see and you can read this read all of this later on you see and just bear in mind you see the demonstration of how these things correlate you see with the purpose of Yahweh by this vision and revelation and we'll be able to see how these things are manifested by this threefold pattern you see, in remembering the pattern, we got to pick up the principles or the precepts of the blood, water, spirit, 40. See? Now, when you go back to, to, uh, 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 to look at the, uh, 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 the pattern, we got a, 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 a tabernacle pattern, and we have a migratory pattern. See? Now, the tabernacle pattern having a most holy place, a holy place, and a court run about, the migratory pattern being Egypt, wilderness of Sinai, and Canaan land. See, now, if we miss it in a tabernacle pattern, we can pick it up in the migratory pattern, see? And if you miss it there, see, then you can pick it up in a tabernacle of men, you see? Or, you, you see, it's just endless, this goes on and on. Now, when we go back and look at the, uh, uh, the generations of the creation here, we see on the fourth day, we have the sun being put in the sky, see? Now the S-U-N in the sky is just a figure or a type and shadow of the S-O-N of Yahweh, see? Now, you've heard them all say that Jesus is the light of the world, see? Well, we know that it's Yahshua that is the light of the world, you see? And we have the S-U-N, which prefigures the S-O-N, being the light of the world. Is that right? Now, now we go back into the law and the prophets, we'll begin to see that everything back there is going to verify this. See? And we go back and look at Samson. See? Samson means like the sun. See? Now, let me ask you a question. See? The pur Yahshua's purpose to come in was to redeem those that were under the law. Is that right? Or he was going to do what? Save Israel. See? What did Samson come to do? Save Israel. Is that right? Yes, indeed. 
See? Now, uh, when we go back and begin to look at all the things that transpired with Samson, you see, we'll see that they all parallel with Yahshua the Messiah. See? Uh, pick up. Oh, boy. Well, let me just do this. See? Now, you know that uh, Samson gave a riddle, see? And nobody could disciple this riddle, see? He didn't even tell his mother or father, you see, what this riddle was about, see? Now, as you go back and begin to read the story, you see? Now, when Samson put forth this charge to these guys, you see, it was for 30 changes of garment, is that right? Right. See? Now, as a consequence, because of the love of his bride, see, he was betrayed to those 30 changes of garments. Is that right? See? Now, we just got to see Yahshua Messiah fulfilling that, being betrayed for 30-something. You see? Yeah, so right. he was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Now, that's just about fit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. See? Okay? Now, and it had to be a woman involved, see, because Israel is Yahshua's bride. Is that right? Yes. Okay? Now, as we begin to go on down through the story about Samson, you see, then we can pick up some other precepts and principles here, whereas uh, Samson, see, in other words, Yahweh caused these things to happen, whereby he would set up an occasion, see, for the Philistines to be overthrown, see. Now, you know uh, that Samson waxed hot and he left, see, and as a consequence, when he returns, his bride has been given away, is that right? So now, these are the circumstances by which Yahweh is operating, just like when he, uh, when the children of Israel were put down here in the bondage, you understand, he caused three famines. So those were the circumstances that he used to bring them down into the land of Egypt to manifest his purpose. See? So now all this time he's working with Samson. So now Samson goes out and slays uh, 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 the, the man and come back with the uh, 30 changes of garments. He pays off that debt and he's gone. Now, the, the next incident that we encounter with, one of the other incidents that we encounter with Samson is where he is uh, burning up the crops. You see? Because now he's really upset with the Philistines. Uh, let's pick it up where he's get the 300 foxes and the branded irons. See, I mean, there's just so much in this, you just have to bear with me because uh, we can't read it all, but we do want to try in the time that we have to demonstrate as much as we possibly can to show you how this thing is working. See, any time that you want to read something and come to an understanding about it, you see, just go back and check your pattern, you see, and look for those principles and precepts, you see, and it'll be revealed to you, mm -hmm. see. You're not going to come to it on your own, see. This is by vision and revelation, you understand? Did you get it, God? Yes. Okay. Judges 15 and 3. Okay. And Samson said concerning them, uh -huh. Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them evil. Uh -huh. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes. Okay, now, we we'll see that <laughs> zero is just a placeholder. Is that right? Mm -hmm. See, but in numerology, or the, numbers, uh, or the science of numbers, we see that it's the number that has the significance. 
See? And we know that three is manifesting the Godhead or the pattern. Is that right? Read. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes uh -huh. and took torches and turned tail to tail and put a torch in the midst between two tails. Okay. Now, in case you have a problem understanding this, this is a cruel rendering of a fox. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let me put it up just a little high here so you'll be able to, in the back to see. Now, those are foxes. Okay, all right. Uh, these are the foxes' tails. Here's the branding iron and the fire. Mm -hmm. See? And those foxes are put tail to tail. Okay, now when you go back here, you have to see Moses at the burning bush back there. You see, you see the fiery cloud that led the children of Israel out of bondage. See, in other words, we pick up the principle of Yahweh being a consuming fire. See, and this fire consumed the harvest back there. Is that right? Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Somebody help me. Can everybody see? So now we see that those foxes running through the fields are taking the configuration of the form of a Y, a consuming fire. See? Oh boy, this thing is so tight. You understand? See? Because it's, we, in other words, we're by, uh, able to look at the pattern and see Yahweh operating his purpose. That's right. See? And the thing about it, you see, is he's running the whole show. So that takes you and me out of it. We don't have any pain or strain, you understand, because it's all on him. Mm -hmm. See? Okay. Now, uh, let's uh, go down to where he's being... At the, at the hill there where he's uh, being, uh, when the, the Israelites come to get him in the top of the hill. I forget just about where that is. I think about 14. Uh, okay, 11th verse. I think it's um, Judges 15, 11. Okay. Then 3,000 men of Judah. Here we go again. See, 3,000. Men of Judah, so we can put another zero out here. It won't make any difference. See, it's the the number that has the significance. See, so we have three thousand men of Judah. Mm -hmm. You see, isn't that somewhat similar to Judas? The sound of the name. Yes. You see, there is some similarity in there, isn't it? See, we'll get a similarity. And uh, in other words, we'll see some principles manifested here, see? Read on. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock of Etam uh -huh. and said to Samson... Went to the top of the rock, see? Now, that's where Samson... See, in other words, when we go back to Yahshua the Messiah, and we see that he was offered up down here, he was, at the, he was on the top of a rock. See, up on Golgotha there. Is that right? See? So now here we have Samson being in the top of a rock, see, and he's being offered up. See, they're coming to get him to deliver him unto the Philistines, see. They came and got Yahshua and delivered him into the hands of the Gentiles. Is that right? See, so here they come, get Samson to deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Is that right? So is this thing, you see a parallel there anywhere? See, all right, read on. And said to Samson, uh -huh. Knowest thou that not that the Philistines are rulers over us? Mm -hmm. What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, 
As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. Uh -huh. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. We come down to take you and to offer you up to the Philistines. Mm -hmm. See, read on. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me upon me yourself uh -huh. and they spoke unto him saying but see the reason they had to do that he they had to swear unto samson because uh, in other words samson cannot be slain before he fulfilled his mission see so they could not kill him and if they had tried to you understand that he would have had to slay them see and that was not his mission he came to save them see to be offered up for israel See, so we have Yahshua Messiah back here being offered up for Israel. See, so we have uh, uh, Samson being offered up for Israel also. Okay, read on. And they spoke in him saying, No, but we will bind thee securely uh -huh. and deliver thee into their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords uh -huh. and brought him up from the rock. And they bound him. He was bound with two new cords. See? And those two new cords are lacking Yahshua Messiah being bound by the law and the prophets. See? All right, read on. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the spirit of Yahweh came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burst with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and uh -huh. put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men with it. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. So now here Samson is, slayed a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. See? So now we are looking for principles of blood, water, spirit and 40. Okay. So now, Samson slew a thousand men. See, that was blood or death. See. Read on. And it came to pass, when he had finished speaking, that he cast away the jawbone he out of his He cast away the jawbone, you see. Read. And called that place Ramoth Lehi. Because he had slain heaps upon heaps. Read on. And he was very thirsty. And he was very thirsty. And called on Yahweh and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance unto the hand of thy servant. So now we're looking for some water. Read on. And now shall I die for thirst and uh -huh. fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But Yahweh split a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water out of it. So in the jawbone of the ass, there was clay, the hollow place where there was water. So now we've got the principle of the blood and the water. So now what are we looking for? Spirit. Got to be spirit. Read on. And when he had drunk, uh -huh. his spirit came again. How about that? Mm -hmm. See? When he had drunk, his spirit came again. Oh, he was revived. Yeah. See, right. so now we got blood, water, spirit, you see, and he judged them for how long? 40 years. 40 years, see. So you get your principles of your blood, water, spirit, 40. Death, burial, resurrection, <laughs> and ascension, you see. Now you can go back through this thing, it just doesn't matter, see. And follow these principles and these precepts, and you can find them. You understand, with every one of those so-called Bible stories, see? In other words, now down here we can see that it ain't about Samson, you see? That it's about Yahshua the Messiah, see? In other words, all these things was just precepts, principles, allegories, types and shadows to bring us up to the reality who is Yahshua the Messiah. Is that right? All right, now, oh boy, uh, how, much, how much time do I have left? Six or seven minutes, oh, well, there's, there's no point in me uh, getting into uh, anything else at this point, see, because it would take uh, a little more time than that, so 
I'm just so pleased to be here and just happy to have had this opportunity to uh, uh, share with you. You see, and I'm truly enjoying myself and I've been edified and I'm just uh, uh, anxiously awaiting uh, the uh, other speakers. Thank you for your attention. I hope something has been said that will be edifying.